Welcome back to Sea Glass Archaeology, everybody. You might notice behind me that we're not standing on my normal beach. Well, a good friend of the page offered to take me out to one of Canada's oldest and most historical spots, Port Morion, here on Cape Breton Island. You know, this spot over here was visited as early as the 1500s by the Portuguese, and the indigenous tribes were already living here and fishing because of the rich cod deposits. It's amazing to think that as early as 1724, coal was being mined from this very area, put on ships, and then shipped to Boston, Massachusetts, where it was sold, making it the first mineral ever exported out of Canada for sale. Although it was long before Canada was established. Back then, I believe they just called this Ile Royale, as it was French territory. I'm really excited for the day, everybody. I'm not sure how much sea glass we're gonna find, but I know I'm gonna have a great afternoon and I'm excited to hit this beach. So without further avail, let's turn this camera around and see what we find. So it's fairly early in the morning, everybody, and you can see that there is some sea glass right over here. It's a little bit thinner and it's still got a little bit of an aqua sea foam tinge to it. So this might even be flat glass from some sort of a window, a thin bottle. These little shells right over here are something I use in my artwork. So I'm really happy to find these on this beach. Uh, take a look at this beautiful shell just sitting right here at the low tide mark. Just gonna make sure that there's nothing living inside of it. And that's coming home with me. Without a doubt, before I even turn this over, we can see that it's from an old washboard. It's got the ridges on it right over here. And look at that, it's even got the indentation right here in the sand. And here it is right over here, everybody. It's got those little lines, the ridges going in two different directions. That is just so neat because I've only found two pieces of sea glass before this one and a lot of nice shells. And all of a sudden I've got a great find here, a nice piece from an old washboard. You can see the armor rock right over here. It's a lot different than the armor rock that we're used to seeing down our way. They make these triangles out of concrete. I'd imagine they each weigh one ton. And this keeps the breakwater from entering the harbor and doing damage to the community. It's kind of wild because this is where the feed is, where the natural water erodes into the ocean and a lot of the garbage is fed in. And a lot of that garbage is the beautiful sea glass that we love. You can see there's a tire right over there. It's a strong indication that people are just discarding and then it makes its way into the ocean. Now over here, I've been told by my friend who brought me that a lot of neat old bottles and artifacts can just wash out in shards from the community. So we're gonna give this a little look here and hopefully we're gonna find something. I'm walking through the brush here. I'm trying to get to the feed point, everybody. I'm not giving up easy if there's gonna be any treasures to be found, everyone. So I'm gonna put my bag down and we're gonna focus here. It's a beautiful little cascading waterfall you can see that's been formed by the erosion process. However, I don't think we're going to be able to find too many treasures in here right now. There's way too much brush, and I don't think we can follow this up the street. Now, don't get too excited, everybody. It's at the high tide mark. You can see this is the highest point that the water pushed. So we know without a doubt that this is not glass. This is going to be plastic for that reason. Now, this over here looks like it's a rock, but this is actually a really old piece of ceramic. You can see how porous it is, and it's got a little bit of lineage on the bottom over here. You can see a little bit of a pattern on the bottom, and this over here, without a doubt, would predate the people that were living here in 1870 when this was a fishery. This is probably something from the earlier settlers. Now, check this one out, everybody. It's a tiny little fragment from a handle. You can see the mold marking right over here on the side of it. And on the inside as well, there's a little bit of light blue glazing. This here probably is one of the finds from those people that were living in this community in the 1870s to the 1900s when there was over 3,000 people here. The natural geological formation that touches the beach here is absolutely fantastic. It's breathtaking. You can see the hundreds of millions of years of sediment that compacts down on an angle and then it meets the sand. Here I am everybody, I'm at Pensioner's Point. It's a nice place to sit and watch the sunset in your vehicle. Okay, everybody, it's a change of scenery. We're now on the sandbar in Port Morion looking for sand dollars. I don't think we're gonna find a lot of sea glass, but this is a really good place to look for shells and especially sand dollars. So hopefully we're gonna find some here. Check it out, everyone. There's a sand dollar right over here that's washed up. It's pretty much at the high tide mark because they're flotsam, they float. They're a lot lighter than these pebbles. 
So they're pretty easy to find. You can see there's a nice little bag going right over here. Business is definitely picking up. There's two sand dollars right over here. And these ones are a lot larger than the other ones that we've been finding. This is great. Oh, here's one. Oh, look out, it's coming, it's gonna get me. Okay, well, there goes my shoes. Check out the beautiful color and the texture on this shell right over here, everybody. Sometimes the things we find on the beach are a lot nicer than sea glass, and only nature can make them. Now check out this one right over here. It's been sitting in the sun for quite a while and it's bleached white. You can see the color contrast compared to the ones that we're finding at the high tide mark from this one that's about 60 feet from where the high tide mark is. So it's probably been sitting here for a month or two, waiting to be discovered. Check out the size difference between these two over here. This one's almost microscopic compared to this, which is about the size of a Canadian loony. There hasn't been much for sea glass, although we found a lot of sand dollars. And over here, we've got this really old handle. It's really, really bright, this handle over here. It almost looks like it's the color of Fiesta wear. It's got some nice hydration to it, and it's been in the ocean for quite some time. It's a great little find. Check this out over here, everyone. It looks like it's a fragment of a little ceramic handle that you'd have on like a cupboard door. It's almost the exact same red as the other handle. Let's put them together and see what they look like. Oh, and look at that. They actually are a perfect match. That's pretty amazing over here. We can see that it's got the slip on two different sides. So it was something that wasn't ornate. It was actually something that was used for consuming. Now check out the remains of this old brick, everybody. Made in Canada. It's even stamped Union Made L.E. Shaw. This is a brick that I recover out my way as well. Well, it's almost time to leave, everybody. And you can see we found a nice handful of sand dollars over here. There weren't any King Kong jumbo size sand dollars. But there is quite a few here. I'd have to say there's about three to four dozen in my hand right now. So it's part three, everybody. We're on a new spot. You can see right behind me is the town of Glace Bay. And this is Big Glace Bay Beach. I'm not sure what there's going to be for sea glass here as well. But this is a good spot to find silica minerals like agates and such. And I'm just excited to be out for the adventure. So let's see what we got. There's a couple of footprints here at the low tide mark. So obviously, if anybody's out picking sea glass, they would have already found it over here. But like I said, I'm just happy to be out right now and to be getting the fresh air and having a new experience in somewhere I haven't been in a couple of years. Like I said, the geological formations over here are almost second to none. You can see that there's just beautiful minerals like this one right over here, and they just vary in such a wide composition. I know so many of you out there just love the rocks and the pebbles when I'm on the beach. So it's really a treat right now to share some of these with you. You can just see the variety of them, like I said. There's just such an abundance of colors and shades. And then you can see over here, this beautiful conglomerate. It almost looks like it's a dinosaur egg, but you can see all of these tiny little rocks over here and they all fuse together. And that's why I call this a conglomerate. Well, here we go, everybody. We've got a beautiful piece of old black pirate glass, if you will. You can see it's the outside wall of an old spirits bottle. It's got a few little lines running across it. And over here on the inside, it's a little bit chippy, but that's okay. It's just happy to find evidence of sea glass out here. I can see that there's footprints on the beach, so somebody's already been here. And this one here, because it's dark and it looks like coal, they probably missed it. I'm collecting a bunch of driftwood over here at the high tide mark, and I came across this old boot. I figured I'd share it with everybody. You can see it's an older material. It looks very well made. I'm guessing this boot over here probably belonged to a coal miner a few generations ago. And now it's just washed up at the high tide mark. So I'm gonna bring it home and it's gonna have a new place in my collection. Okay, everybody, we got a new stop over here. So now I'm in Tablehead in Glace Bay. There's definitely some sea glass out here. So I can't wait to see what we find. You can definitely see that people have already been down here looking for sea glass. Although it's impossible to get it all through all these little pebbles here. So I know there's still gonna be stuff to find. Like you can see right over here, this entire pile has not been touched. So let's take a look right now and see if we can find some sea glass with some nice color to it. There you go. It's our first little find of the day, a tiny little green. Oh yeah, look at that. There's green right there. There's another green right here. This is the good stuff. Okay, everybody, this is more like it right now. I'm down on my knees. I'm picking the tiny sea glass right over here. I really don't know. I figure that the deeper down I go, the bigger the rocks are going to get. 
and then I might find some bigger stuff. Although I really need these tiny pieces right over here for my artwork, especially after the summer that I had, I did so well. All these little pieces are really gonna add up and you can see that they're all over this beach right over here. It's been two years since I came here and it's still just engulfed in these tiny, tiny little shards that I just love so much. And they're all just perfectly aged, I have to say. There's so much really good sea glass right over here. It's gonna be hard to get me up off of this spot. My goodness, there's so much glass here. Oh, look at this right over here. Oh my goodness, is this a piece of uranium glass? It almost looks like it's a shoe, like an elongated shoe or a bean. So we're gonna check this one out when we get home. It might be uranium glass, but it's just like I said, the bigger, oh my gosh, look at this one over here, hold on. It's a nice piece of aqua sea foam. It's a little over a half an inch. And it's like I said, the deeper you get into these rocks, the bigger the pieces are gonna be that I'm recovering here. They're drilling a well right up top on the top of the shoreline. I don't know if you can hear that right now. It's taken away from the ebb and the flow of the water. But it's not taken away from my good time here. This is awesome. I'm just so happy to be out right now and to be exploring. I'm really, really thankful for my friend for bringing me. And hopefully she invites me out again sometime soon and we can have some more beachcombing adventures. I am in tiny heaven right now. I'm gonna come right back in over here and do a little bit of digging back in these higher rocks, these bigger pebbles. And then you can see, like I said, there's so much just beautifully aged pieces over here, just aged to perfection. I'm picking them as quick as I can and they just keep showing up because I know I'm not gonna be here forever. Oh my goodness, another piece, another piece. Just sea glass everywhere. Now this piece right over here definitely looks like it's uranium glass, so we're gonna have to test this one as well. I can definitely see that the people that picked here only surface scratched because there's so much good stuff right below the piles, pebbles. Unfortunately for me, it's all really small, so it's nothing like super amazing that I get to scream about and share with you. But I'm gonna keep picking here, guys. I'm gonna probably have to turn the camera off because I'm just not finding anything other than all these amazing little tinies over here and I'll report back to you if I find anything cool. Look at this here, everybody. It's the stamping from the back of a plate, and it says Kinson. We've got a crown right over here, typically made in England. There's no other pattern on the other side, but it's just so great that this little fragment of the plate survives so I can share it with you. Okay, so this is some of the bigger rock over here where I would expect some bigger pieces are gonna be trapped. And right away, look at that. I found this piece. Looks like it's the lip of a bottle and I'm on the right track here. So let's keep going because there's a beautiful piece of aqua seafoam blue right over here, another green. And I think that it, the more I dig into this pile, the better the chances are that we're gonna find something large. As I call, oh, look at this right over here. Oh my goodness, just as I'm talking, it's a nice piece of seafoam aqua blue. It's just not the best age, too bad compared to a lot of the other stuff that we're finding on this beach. Now check out this amazing find over here, everybody. It's a dark shade of olive green, I'd say. Almost looks like amber brown, but it is an olive green. And it's got this air bubble in it right over there. It's so amazing when you can find a beautiful air bubble in a piece of sea glass. As I've talked about before, this is a great sign that the glass and the beach that we're picking on is predating the automation time period of the early part of the 20th century. So this is a great find right here. Okay, everybody, check it out. I just made a huge score right over here in the high pile, just like I figured. It's a perfectly aged piece of lemon yellow sea glass. Oh my gosh. It's almost an inch long, and this is without a doubt the best find of the day. It's just wild because so many people tell me you can only find tiny sea glass over here. And I totally identified that these bigger rocks over here have only been surface scratched. You can see there's only a little bit of kicks in it. And look at that, just about a foot underneath the surface, I found this beautiful yellow gem. The rocks get a lot deeper right underneath the surface in this pile. It's making me think that there actually could be something trapped underneath the surface that's very remarkable. 
It's like I'm gonna show it to you right here, everybody. So the pebbles on the top, the pebbles on the top are really small. And then when you get a few inches down, they get considerably larger. And that's a great place to trap beautiful pieces like this one right over here. Nice little aqua sea foam, very well aged as well. So let's keep this hunt going, everybody. Yeah, like I said, larger pieces right over here underneath all these rocks. Little piece of a plate. All good for me, gang. I'm going to take it all. Okay, everybody, I'm still finding lots of great tinies and smaller pieces. You can see this one over here. It's almost black. It's so dark. And I really have a feeling that if I keep digging here, I'm going to find something significant because these rocks keep getting bigger and bigger as I keep moving this way but I'm trying to be very careful that I don't miss anything as I remove all of these layers because every single one of these tiny pieces is very valuable to me. It's almost as valuable as a large one. Another beautiful piece of aqua sea foam. It's extremely well aged and I really just cannot believe how much good sea glass there is just a few inches below the surface where everybody else has already walked today and done their picking. I also have to mention that it is high tide too. So the fact that we're finding so much sea glass is absolutely a double blessing to me. The water is so rough in the winter times that it really smooths the glass out here absolutely more so than I've seen anywhere else. Some of these pieces are just aged to perfection. Maybe when I go home, I'm gonna make an extra video and show everybody what I found. Oh, look at that. A beautiful piece of blue right over here. It's not that big, but I'll take any blue I can find. I'm sure most sea glassers would agree. Check this piece out over here, everybody. It's hard to see, but it's a beautiful piece of turquoise blue. It's very small. It's about a quarter inch and it's really well aged. Pretty happy about this one. So it's been like 20 minutes, everybody, and I haven't found much. And now I just found another piece that may or may not be uranium glass. So we're gonna have to give this one a look when we get home too. I think what's gonna happen is we're gonna take the whole bag and just lay it out underneath the black light and see what's uranium glass and what's not. Okay, everybody, here's my next nice find. You can see it's the bottle bottom of a nice olivey green type of a bottle, probably a wine bottle. There's the inside, here's the outside. It's a really nice piece. It's about an inch across. I'm just sitting here, as you can see, I'm digging a lot, a lot of tinies right now. But other than that yellow piece, I haven't really found too much to write home about. And then look at that, it's a piece of a spark plug. It wouldn't be one of my videos unless I found a piece of a spark plug. But I'm still having a great time here, guys. I'll let you see. This is what my bag looks like. It's pretty full, about three quarters of a pound of the smallest little sea glass mixed with some medium. And I'm still on the hunt here. I'm very positive that I'm gonna come up with something significant in this high pile, as I like to call it, because I can see that it's been here for a long time and that nobody's really picked through it. And it's also where I found that yellow piece, but I found it about 50 to 60 feet that way over there. And I'm working my way really slow because this pile is just yielding me so many of these tiny pieces that I use for my artwork and my creations. And like I said, when you're finding beautiful pieces that are super aged like this, it's really hard to get up and walk around. Check this out. It's a perfect 10. It's a wonderfully aged cobalt blue. Nice hydration to it. Just hiding here in the bigger pebbles. Well, there you go, everybody. There's a nicely aged olive nugget right over here about three quarters of an inch. It's a great little find for this pile. It's absolutely amazing to think that the first transatlantic signals were sent from this spot or not too far from here in Tablehead all the way across the ocean where they were received. And nowadays everybody's walking around with a cell phone and the internet in their pocket. It was so hard to do so long ago. And this being one of the most Eastern points in North America was a great place for him to set up his antennas and receivers. So here's the bag, everyone. You can see there's about a pound and a half to two pounds of sea glass in it. And it's been a long time since I found this beautiful yellow over here. It's all the way down at the bottom. And I've absolutely filled this bag up with the help of my friend Karen right to the top. There's just not enough time in the day to pick this beach off. You can still see that there's so many big piles of pebbles that people have only surface scratched. And then right underneath is where the good sea glass is. 
Check out this beautiful piece over here, everybody. It's not that big, you can see by my finger, but it's got some really unique patterning on it. And that tells me that this piece over here is a piece of depression era glassware. At first I thought it was a privacy window, but it's way too thin, as you can see when I turn it over on the cross section, to be from a privacy window. And now check this out, everyone. This just goes to show you, it doesn't matter how many people have walked the beach, you can always find something. This beautiful red marble is sitting right on the surface, and we're just leaving the beach right now, and here is the find of the day. Look at all of the seaweed over here on my shoreline, everybody. I'm just back home right now taking the doggies for a walk, and I just wanted to share with you what it looks like down here because it's been another week now, and we're still not gonna be able to do any beach combing with all of the seaweed that's covering all the beautiful pebbles that traps all of the wonderful sea glass that you're used to watching me find. I'm really excited to take this bag of sea glass and spread it out and see what we found. But first off, I figured we'll put it on the scale right over here. So here we go, we're gonna zero it out. And then we're gonna put this on, I think it's about two and a half pounds. And look at that, it's two pounds, five and a half ounces, or a little bit over one kilogram. Now it's a lot more fun than just putting it on the scale is to just take this bag and empty it all out. Because let me tell you, it's gonna look like a lot more sea glass when it's outside of the bag. So here we go, let's get this focus going on. And here we have what two and a half pounds, just under two and a half pounds of sea glass looks like. So this is what I would expect to see on a typical beach in Cape Breton. So it was a really good trip out to Tablehead. There were so many smaller little pieces of sea glass that were just waiting and a few really good ones that are really well aged. Without a doubt, my favorite find of the day is this yellow piece right over here. And I also wanted to say that you can see that people find the colors that are brighter a lot easier. And that's why there's not as many blues over here and there's not as many bright greens. But when you get down to these pieces like this over here, it's hard to believe that this is a dark olive green, but it is. So there's been a lot of questions about what do I do with all of the sea glass? You know, I love making these videos and sharing with everybody, and I'm definitely not doing this as a commercial, but I figured I'd share a few of the things that I create right over here. So the tiny little pieces that you see on the tray, they could very well become these post earrings. They could even go into these beautiful little mini bottles over here. These are my mini mosaic masterpieces. These are little brooches that I make. But right now, because we're so close to Christmas, I'm gonna be making a lot of these little holiday ornaments. And as you can see, it takes about 40 pieces of glass just to make one of my little stars over here. So these pieces over here are gonna go a long way. And I was thinking to myself, if we were picking 30 pieces a minute, for two hours, that would be 3,600 pieces. And there's a good chance that that's what we're looking at right over here is about 3,000 pieces of sea glass. With all that sea glass on the tray, it's really difficult to see how well aged a lot of these pieces are. So I was putting them all back in the bag to show you the driftwood. And then I just wanted to show everybody how some of these pieces are just perfect tens and they're aged to perfection. This is the kind of quality that I like to refer to as centuries aged. And it's kind of wild, the environment is so abrasive out there that even these gray pieces from old TV screens haven't been in there for a hundred years because there weren't TVs a hundred years ago, but they are that nicely aged. After those couple of hours out in Tablehead, I have to say that Glace Bay has some of the nicest sea glass that I've ever seen in all of North America, and I really hope to get back out there again sometime real soon. So over here, I've got all of the shells that were found in Port Morion on the two different beaches that we visited. Now the sand dollars weren't for me, and I don't have a use for them yet, so I was really happy to help Karen pick all of those. But you can see over here, these shells, they're not very common on my beach. So this is about a two to three year supply for my artwork. And I'm really happy to have these. They weighed out to about three pounds as well, but I'm gonna spare you the weigh in. Check out all this beautiful driftwood, everybody. There's about six and a half pounds of it on the tray that just had all the sea glass on it. And there's so many different styles and textures. I just love it all. Whether it's pieces of washed up bark or little branches like these over here, even some obscure little branches that have neat little curvatures to them. They're all gonna become something beautiful and special with my artwork. So I'm really excited to have three different styles of things that I brought off of the beaches. I always love to joke that the beach is my favorite place to shop because it's always free, the selection is always changing, and you never know what you're gonna find out there. So this is a really great haul for me and I'm really excited to get it in before the winter time.
Okay, everybody, the lights are out, and I'm all set to find out if any of these pieces fluoresce under the spectrum of a black light. Well, here we go. Well, I'm pretty surprised here. Well, at first I thought the spark plug was fluorescing, but it looks like the only thing we have over here is a piece of melt glass that's known as custard glass. You know, it looks a lot like jadeite, and this just goes to show we always never know which pieces are going to fluoresce or not until we get home and we turn that light on. Well, everybody, that's going to be about it for me today. You can see that it's getting dark behind me, and it's just been such an action-packed afternoon and morning filled with so many different beaches around industrial Cape Breton. So I want to say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all of your love and support. And a very special thanks to my friend Karen as well for taking me to all these amazing places and showing me such a wonderful time. Hopefully we're back out on the beach again real soon, everybody. I can't wait to share my next finds with you.